Hello everyone, this is the remaining part of the first unit. We are going to be looking into the remaining part of the topics which are sensors for water quality, which is a pH sensor. We are going to look into accelerometer sensor, the gyroscope sensors, moisture sensors, hall effect and the humidity sensors. So we will be looking them into one by one. So first we will be starting with the topic water pH quality sensor. So what is a pH sensor? pH sensor is one of the most essential tools that are typically used for water measurements. So, if you want to measure the quality of your water that, that either you are going to consume or use it for a special purpose, you will be measuring it with respect to a physical quantity by name pH. Okay. So, for example, force is measured in Newton and so on. So, similarly for water, if you want to measure the quality, you will be measuring it by a term called the pH of the particular. Uh, water. So why a pH sensor? This type of sensor is able to measure the amount of alkalinity and acidity in water and other solutions. Okay. So the main purpose of this pH sensor is that the pH is nothing but the measurement of the alkalinity and the acidity of a particular liquid. The liquid can be water or it can be solutions. Okay. So this is how a particular pH sensor would look like and uh, this is the pH sensor measuring unit over here. You will have to dip this into the particular solution that is the liquid that you are going to be using and this end, this probe over here will be connected to this particular module over here and this particular when it is connected this is a male and this is a female connection over here you will be connecting it to this particular board over here and from this board you will be connecting it through either the micro USB cable to your particular Arduino or to the particular system. So this is how you will be measuring if the, uh, any particular reading of the particular liquid, the pH quality. So how are they made? With a glass electrode, a glass membrane is fused on as a pH sensor. So please remember that glass electrode is available and the glass membrane is fused as the pH sensor over there. You can see the glass membrane and the glass electrode inside over there. So they are fused to form the pH sensor over here. How do they work? This membrane is filled with a buffer solution of known pH. Okay, typically pH over here, it is filled with a known pH value of around a particular solution with a particular value pH of 7. So whatever inside over here, the liquid will have a known pH value over here and that known pH value is equal to 7. The difference in H plus ions creates a potential that is red versus the stable potential of the reference electrode. So the difference between these two is what you will be getting as the value over there. So the difference in the H plus ions that is created as a potential when you are reading a particular solution, that is what that is how you will be able to measure the particular pH sensor of a particular value, pH of a particular liquid. pH scale is used to measure the acidity and basicity of a particular liquid. So that is what it is done, and this is what the Arduino pH meter is also going to do. It can have readings ranging from 1 to 14. Okay, so you can measure liquids having pH values ranging from 1 to 15, by 1 shows the most acidic and 14 shows the most basic liquid. Okay. So the most acidic liquid will show a pH value of 1, whereas the most basic liquid will have a basicity value will have a value of 14. 7 pH is for neutral substances that are neither acidic nor basic. So between 1 and 4, the average value is 7. So you can understand that this 7 found on a pH reading is nothing but a value that is neither acidic nor that is a basic value. So how do you use it? To use it just connect the pH sensor with the BNC connector and plug it plug the pH to. Okay. So this is what I meant by the BNC sensor or BNC connector over here. Okay. So you will be connecting it to this particular meter over here. Okay. So that particular BNC connector and plug it to the pH to interface into the analog input pin port of the Arduino micro. So 0 is the particular analog A0 pin you will be connecting it to. If pre-programmed you will get the pH value easily. So if the pre-programmed condition is available over there, when you just plug, plug it in you will be able to get it. So you will have to just connect it to the BNC connector over there. So some cautions that you need to take before using this pH meter is that you need to use an external switching power supply and the voltage as close as possible to 5 volts. So that is the condition that you will have to be looking for. So please don't forget that you will have to use an external power supply and that external power supply will be having a particular value of less 5 volts. 
more accurate the voltage more higher the accuracy okay so if it is 4.9 volt please remember you will not be getting a correct value there that is a particular drawback over here so more the accurate value more the particular particular uh, higher uh, higher accuracy and if the electrode is in continuous use every time you need to calibrate it by standard solution in order to obtain more accurate results so if the electrode is in the continuous uh, use every time you need to calibrate it once once in a while okay so that then only when you use it for the next time you will be able to get better results the best environment temperature is about 25 degrees celsius and the ph value is known and reliable close to the measured value so the best environment environmental conditions that you will be using them is around 25 degrees celsius that is when the liquid pH can be measured accurately. Otherwise, there will be a particular tolerance in which you will have to be able to uh, find the accurate value from that particular temperature. Steps to use the pH meter: connect the equipment according to the graphic. That is, the pH electrode is connected to the PS, BNC connector, as it was shown earlier on the pH pH meter board. That is a board that we saw interfacing the PNC connector to the microcontroller. And then use the connection lines. The pH meter board is connected to the analog port of the zero of the particular Arduino microcontroller. This is what I told you earlier. It is connected to the analog port zero. When the Arduino controller gets power, you will see the blue LED in on the board is on. Okay. So when the Arduino controller gets the power, you will you know that the Arduino works on a 5 volt power supply. So you will see the blue LED on the board it goes on. Upload the sample code to the Arduino microcontroller. The sample code for the pH measurement is uploaded on the Arduino microcontroller. Record the pH value printed, then compare it with the 7 and the difference should be changed into the offset in the sample code. So, this particular step has to be done to measure the offset value. Okay, so that is when you have If you do not do this offset value, this offset value, the original value plus this offset is always what you will be getting in the reading. You will not be getting the correct reading over there. So please make sure that the offset is neutralized over there. Then you put the pH electrode into the standard solution of what you want to know, whose pH value is 7. So you put it into the pH sensor that value 7 or directly short at the input of the pH or you short it. Either you put it into a solution which has a pH value 7 or you directly short the input of the BNC connector. Either way the value will be the particular value 7. Open the serial monitor of the Arduino IDE. So the serial monitor on the type top right corner is available. You can see the pH value printed on it and the error does not exceed 0 0.3. So you will see that the error does not exceed that particular value 0 0.3 over there. For example, the pH value printed is 6.88, so the difference is 0 0.12. So you will see that a particular value of 0 0.12 is over there. So you should change the ask if an offset on your program having the value 0 0.00 to this particular value has defined offset 0 0.12 in your program. So this is the offset that we were talking about over Now you put the pH electrode into the pH standard solution whose value is 4. Okay, so till now what did you do? You put it into a liquid which is having a pH value 7 or you shorted the particular PNC connector because the particular pH sensor has a particular liquid having pH value 7. So either you short it or you have a particular liquid having a pH value 7 and you insert it over there. Second step is you put the pH electrode into the pH standard solution whose value is equal to 4. Then wait about 1 minute and adjust the gain potential device. Let the value stabilize at around 4. So you are making the particular device to stabilize around the particular 4 value of there. At this time the acidic calibration has been completed and you can measure the pH value of the acidic solution. As we saw earlier, from 7, if you are moving towards 1, the particular solution becomes acidic. Okay, So this acidic calibration is what we were, what we are being doing over here. Okay, So you are making the calibration for that. According to the linear characteristics of the pH electrode itself, after the above calibration, you can directly measure the pH value of the alkaline solution. So after the acidic solution calibration is over, you don't have to wait for much long time. You can directly go into the alkaline solution measurement you don't have to do any alkaline measurement uh, based uh, calibration but if you want to get better accuracy you can recalibrate it so you can have another liquid which is having an alkaline having a pH value of around uh, 10 for example 10 or something like that and that particular solution you can uh, dip your particular pH meter into it and make sure that you are able to calibrate it that's it
context and optional uh, point order. Alkylating calibration uses a standard solution whose pH value is 9.18. So you will be using that particular pH value 9.18 and you will also adjust the gain potential device with the value stabilized to around 9.18 order. After this calibration, you can measure the pH value of an alkaline solution. Okay. So you can either do it for an acidic or an alkaline. If you want to do it for an alkaline solution, Acidic particular calibration is sufficient, but if you really want accurate results or you want a confident answer, then you can go for the alkaline calibration also. So this is what we saw here, and this is the diagram over here that we can see over here. The black color wire is the one that is connected to the particular ground over here, and this is your VCC pin which is connected to the 5 volt. Please remember any voltage below or above 5 volt, you will not be getting the accurate answer. So please remember that. Then you have the TX and RX pin over here. The particular TX pin which is the yellow which is connected to the pin number 2 and the RX pin is nothing with the pin that is connected to pin number 3 of your particular green. Okay. So where are these pH sensors used? Okay. These pH measurement is used in a way, uh, varieties of applications like in agriculture, wastewater treatment, industrial processes, environmental monitoring, research and development. All these domains they have this particular usage of pH sensors. Okay, so this, these are the applications of these particular pH quality sensors. Next sensor that we will be talking about is the accelerometer. An accelerometer is an electronic sensor that measures the acceleration forces acting on an object. Okay, if an object is there, if it is moving, what are the acceleration forces acting on that object? in order to determine the object's position in space and monitor the object's movement. So, how much of acceleration is applied on the object based on that you can see the movement of the particular object and its position in, in space. Acceleration which is a vector quantity is the rate of change of object velocity. You know that acceleration will not be with, uh, it, it is not just a scalar quantity, it is with respect to direction or there. It has magnitude and direction. So, it is a vector quantity and it is a rate of change of the object's velocity. It depends on the movement of the particular object. Velocity being the displacement of the object divided by the change in time. You know that the physical definition for velocity is the displacement with respect to time. There are two types of acceleration forces and the two types of forces are the static force and the dynamic force. Okay. So, this is a simple MEMS accelerometer microelectromechanical system. And you can see that the particular sensor works with the uh, principle of these particular springs over here. And these uh, uh, C1, C2 capacitors are the ones that are the fixed plates over here. Okay. So the acceleration can be measured in either direction over here because it is a vector quantity. So static forces are forces that are constantly being applied to the object, okay, such as friction or gravity or these are coming under the particular static forces. So friction, gravity. And dynamic forces are moving forces applied to the object at various rates. What are these dynamic forces? Examples are vibration, force exerted on a cube ball in a game of pool, all these. Okay, when two balls are hitting each other, what is the force applied on one particular ball? So this is why accelerometers are used in automobile collision safety systems, for example. So when there is a particular pollution occurring on your particular vehicle, our uh, advert should come into picture. So this is when you will be using the accelerometer. When a car is acted on by a powerful dynamic force, the accelerometer sends in the rapid deceleration, sends an electronic signal to embed a computer, which in turn deploys the particular airbags in the particular vehicle available over there. So this is the reason why you will be using these particular accelerometer sensors. And there are three different types of accelerometers and each are designed to efficiently function in their internal environments. And what are the three different types of these accelerometers? One is a piezoelectric accelerometer, the other one is a piezo resistance accelerometer and the other one is a capacitive accelerometer. And this is your particular accelerometer. How it, this is the particular sensor over there. As it is a vector quantity, you will have the Z, Y and X on the particular axis on the particular pins over here for alignment purposes when you have the surface pin and the ground and the VCC pin. I hope you got an outline of this particular accelerometer. We will see in the future videos about other sensors also.